OpenAI just dropped a major news bomb. Essentially, they're going to roll out Doll E version 3 directly integrated into ChatGPT, providing a mechanism whereby you can essentially converse through ChatGPT, providing prompts and generate images conversationally. In this video, I'm going to show you the difference between this new integration of ChatGPT and Doll E 3 with Stable Diffusion and Mid Journey. You're really going to understand the power that this is going to give you. So make sure you watch this video all the way to the end because you're gonna learn a lot and we're gonna have fun. By now, if you've been following the world of AI and image generation, you know that there are some other really popular diffusion-based models out there. These include Stable Diffusion, which has various versions and releases and an entire ecosystem around it, which is open source and you can run on your computer. And then there's Midjourney, which is for pay, which you have to use through Discord. But what OpenAI is about to do by giving us Dolly version three integrated into ChatGPT is on a whole other level. Being able to generate images by describing what you want conceptually, conversationally, gives you so much more power to be able to create the images that you want, to get consistency out of your images, to modify your images ever so slightly, and even kind of create story flows of images where you reference the same entity or being and have different versions of images generated with that person or being or character in them. The text prompts that you have to provide to Stable Diffusion or Mid Journey are different than the kind of conversational prompting that you'll be able to do in ChatGPT. With Stable Diffusion and Mid Journey, you have to engineer your prompts. That's a little bit different. Now, in order to understand the difference between how OpenAI is going to integrate Dolly 3 into ChatGPT and what you can do and how you can generate images with that versus generating images in Stable Diffusion and Mid Journey, I'm gonna do some prompting and we're gonna generate some images and we'll compare some images side by side and see what we can get with different kinds of prompts. I'm really excited about the power that's gonna be in the hands of individuals to create content once this rolls out in early October. All right, let's get started. All right, so I thought we could start with taking a look at the announcement that OpenAI made via Twitter yesterday. Our new text to image model, Dolly 3, can translate nuanced requests into extremely detailed and accurate images. Coming soon to ChatGPT Plus and Enterprise. So take a look at this picture. It's pretty interesting. You got this, it looks like an avocado, it says he feels empty inside. There's like a spoon sitting here taking notes. So these were all generated with Dolly in ChatGPT. Let's look at this one here. How was this generated? So here's the prompt. An illustration of an avocado sitting in a therapist's chair saying, I just feel so empty inside. So it even does text with a pit sized hole in its center. Yep. The therapist, a spoon, scribbles notes. I mean, it nailed that. Let's take a look at another one. So this one is a 2D animation of a folk music band composed of anthropomorphic autumn leaves, each playing traditional bluegrass instruments amidst a rustic forest setting dappled with the soft light of a harvest moon. Look at this. That is insanely good. And it's literally based off of this kind of conversational description. So there are a bunch of images that are used as examples here. This one here shows Dolly 2 and in comparison Dolly 3, which looks like it generates better, more sophisticated images off of the same prompt. So what I thought we could do is take a look at some of these images that were generated using Dolly 3 in ChatGPT and actually taking the prompts from these and seeing what will get generated in Mid Journey and Stable Diffusion. Let's take a look at this one here. A middle-aged woman of Asian descent, her dark hair streaked with silver appears fractured and splintered, intricately embedded within a sea of broken porcelain. Look at that. Insane. The porcelain glistens with splatter paint patterns in a harmonious blend of glossy and matte blues, greens, oranges, and reds, capturing her dance in a surreal juxtaposition of movement and stillness. Her skin tone, a light hue like the porcelain, adds an almost mystical quality to her form. I mean, that is unbelievable. Now let's take this text, which is essentially a prose-like description and put it into Mid Journey and see what we get. Okay, so here we go. Let's try this. So I'm gonna just move this up a little bit so I can see the prompt. And Mid Journey runs inside of Discord. I'm in my Discord right now, and I'm just gonna do imagine 
and that's what you type to basically tell Midjourney that you want to generate an image. And this isn't letting me copy and paste, so I'm going to just go ahead and type it in. All right, so I've got the prompt that was used in Dolly and ChatGPT here inside of my Midjourney prompt. And as you can see, this is a pretty verbose and detailed description in plain English language. Let's see how Midjourney handles this. So it's generating the image now. Let me just give it a moment to do that. Interesting, so I'm gonna zoom in here. I mean, not bad. Let's pick the first one here and enlarge that. Look at that. All right, so there's the mid-journey interpretation of that prompt. Not bad, actually, but there is the version that was generated using ChatGPT and Dolly 3. I think that this one is sort of way more detailed and captures the essence of the prompt better than the Midjourney one, which is here. But the Midjourney one is still pretty good. Now, the reason for this is because Midjourney isn't conversational. It is based on prompts that are supposed to be sort of descriptive, where you add elements to it, describing a style. And the more verbose that you get, the more it ignores some of what was put into the prompt. Now let's use this exact same prompt in Stable Diffusion and see what we get. All right, so I just opened up my Stable Diffusion. As you can see, I'd previously been generating some images for another video I was doing, and these are cute little Havanese dogs. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and paste that same prompt, a middle-aged woman of Asian descent with that descriptive prose-like text. You don't really need to understand all this, but I did do a small tutorial on it uh, in another video, which I'll reference at the end of this video if you want to learn how to use Stable Diffusion. And I will hit Invoke, and let's see what the latest and greatest version of Stable Diffusion generates for this prompt. All right, so just giving it this prompt generated this image which doesn't really match up with what we were trying to do with this prompt which doesn't even come close if you ask me and here's the doll e version with the same prompt using chat gpt i mean it's kind of night and day and i think the reason for it is the way it's integrated with chat gpt and you can give it conversational prompts now, let me show you guys what an example of a prompt in Stable Diffusion that generates something good looks like. So this website, Civit AI, lets you download various models that you can use with Stable Diffusion. I'm not going to get into the details of how that exactly works, but I just wanted to give you some example images here that were generated with Stable Diffusion and see what the prompts were. So this one's interesting here. Let's click on this. Here's the prompt for it. A floating gaseous eyeball, creature, horror, ectoplasm, ghost, translucent, nightmare, chaos, masterpiece, best quality, intricate details, all sorts of verbiage here. And then a negative prompt is what you don't want it to do in the image. So deformed, distorted, disfigured, poorly drawn, bad anatomy, and so on and so forth. The point being that this is an engineered prompt. A human would not necessarily make this kind of image from this. This is essentially a bunch of words that have been put together that evoke stable diffusion to bring this this image out of what's called the latent space, which is a little bit too technical for this video. But the point being is consider this prompt, a floating gaseous eyeball creature or ectoplasm ghost translucent, and then compare it with the prompt that OpenAI used to generate this image. A middle-aged woman of Asian descent, her dark hair streaked with silver, appears fractured and splintered, intricately embedded within a sea of broken porcelain, and so on. And you can see the difference. This is far more conversational and similar to how an actual human would describe this image, whereas this other one is not, okay? 
So hopefully that gives you an idea of the difference between needing to engineer and cajole a prompt to generate an image versus just thinking about what you want to see and describing it in the words that you would like to see it in and getting that result. Okay, let's take a look at a few more examples here. So I'm gonna go back to some of these images that were generated by OpenAI and we'll pick another one to try and compare. All right, let's see this one here. An illustration of a human heart made of translucent glass standing on a pedestal amidst a stormy sea. That's crazy how it got that like perfect. Rays of sunlight pierce through the clouds, illuminating the heart. There's the rays of sunlight, revealing a tiny universe within. And look at that. There's a galaxy in there. The quote, find the universe within you, is etched in bold letters across the horizon. So it put them on the pedestal. But I mean, that is very, very, very close and in tune with this prompt. So now let's try this prompt in mid-journey. All right, so here are the four sample images that were generated by Midjourney. I'm gonna enlarge this. Which one seems to be the closest to what we were trying to do based on the prompt? I don't know, let's try uh, number two because it has some writing on it. Now Midjourney admittedly doesn't do writing well yet and they are working on that, but let's enlarge the second image and take a look at it and compare it to the prompt. Okay, so you can see it generated this text which is not really real text you know did this rock as a pedestal there's kind of this part it's not exactly a real human shaped heart and it is in the sea it is kind of uh, being illuminated by light from the sky and i guess that might be a universe inside of the heart but compare that with what doll e3 generated and i think it's pretty safe to say that doll e3 wins this one and again, I think it's because of the power of having it integrated with chat GPT that it can take this conversational description of the image that you want to generate and literally do just what was set. That is, again, not the same as trying to engineer a prompt in Stable Diffusion or in Mid Journey. Now let's see what Stable Diffusion does with this. So I'm going to go ahead and paste that prompt, an illustration of a human heart made of translucent glass, and let's see what it does. All right, so here is the Stable Diffusion version based on this prompt. Doesn't really quite compare. I mean, it got sort of the human shape, the ocean, there's a pedestal, something that looks like it says the universe on the pedestal here. There's clouds, but compare that again to what Doll E3 generated. This is insanely more in tune with this prompt than this is. That doesn't mean that Stable Diffusion can't generate amazing images. Images, it absolutely can. I mean, look at this image of a Havanese dog that Stable Diffusion generated. You can get amazing images with Stable Diffusion. And of course, the same can be said for Mid Journey. But the thing that I'm trying to showcase here is that the conversational way that you can describe or talk to ChatGPT and describe an image and have it generate that image using Dolly, that is a game changer and will open up the world of text to image generation to the average person far more easily than the other two. Even though the other ones are fairly straightforward and you can get into them, prompt engineering is a little bit more involved. You gotta experiment with it more to get what you want. Now let's look at OpenAI's announcement. So it says, Dolly 3 understands significantly more nuance and detail than our previous systems, allowing you to easily translate your ideas into exceptionally accurate images. It says it's coming soon. And on their Twitter profile, they mentioned that it's coming in early October which is just around the corner. So here it explains what's going on. Modern text to image systems have a tendency to ignore words or descriptions, forcing users to learn prompt engineering. Dolly 3 represents a leap forward in our ability to generate images that exactly adhere to the text provided. That is the key that I've been trying to convey. It's harder to do this with the other image generating platforms. 
Dolly 3 is built natively on ChatGPT, which lets you use ChatGPT as a brainstorming partner and refiner of your prompts. Just ask ChatGPT what you want to see in anything from a simple sentence to a detailed paragraph. Here's a prompt. My five-year-old keeps talking about a super duper sunflower hedgehog. What does it look like? So this is a prompt that was provided to ChatGPT. ChatGPT generated these four images and those look like a super duper sunflower hedgehog to me, right? So it's pretty cool. Here, let's watch this one minute video. So there you go. I'm excited about this and I look forward to it coming out and I look forward to seeing what you guys all create with this new technology or with this evolving technology, this new integration of Dolly 3 with ChatGPT that's coming out in October. If you found this to be a useful video, please like and subscribe to my channel and I'll bring you a lot more of this kind of content. Thanks and I'll see you soon.